as requirement for bank customers. President Tinubu orders security operatives to stop orgy of violence in Plateau. PDP governors demand credible polls in Bayelsa, Imo and Kogi. And on the foreign scene, Angola and DRC announced joint project to rehabilitate railway line. These are the headlines on Trust News Update at this hour. Thanks for joining. I am Ayuba Ilya. Now the details. The House of Representatives on Tuesday urged the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to halt the implementation of the Know Your Customer Directive. The directive followed the adoption of a motion brought by Kelechi Nwogu from River State. Nwogu noted that, uh, that as impressive as the policy is, the directive is in conflict with the provision of Section 37 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended on the right to privacy of citizens. The lawmaker therefore suggested that such tasks should be handled by the Nigeria Police the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, as well as the Intelligence and Crime Tracking Agencies. The privacy of citizens. Also cognizant of the fact that the banks in the, in the country already have the names, telephone numbers, passport photographs, email, national identification number, biometrics, verification number, utility bills, and other basic requirements with which to identify, know, and monitor their customers. Mr. Liga, we also took further cognizant that there are better means of monitoring money laundering, terrorism financing, and proliferation financing, such as the Nigerian Police Force, Nigerian Financial, Nigerian Financial Intelligence, with the Economic Financial Crime Commission, EFCC. President Bola Tinubu has expressed sadness and grief over the latest round of violence and killings in Plateau State. In a statement signed by his special advisor, Special Duties, Communications and Strategy, Dele Alake, the president condemned the most recent killings in Mangu local government area of Plateau State and parts of Benue State. Alake said President Tunubu found very depressing the festering reprisal attacks, needless and avoidable bloodletting among communities in the two states. The statement said that to rebuild trust and restore harmony to these conflict areas, President Tunubu urged community leaders, religious leaders, traditional rulers, social cultural organizations to work together to help foster genuine and long lasting peace while reaffirming his government's strong determination to stamp out violent crimes and all forms of criminality everywhere in Nigeria, the president has directed security agencies to fish out the masterminds of the dastardly act to face the full wrath of the law. He, however, charged the governments of Plateau and Benue states and the emergency response agencies to provide support and immediate relief to victims who have been displaced as a result of the conflict. The House of Representatives has urged the National Security Advisor to declare the killings in Plateau State a national emergency. This was sequel to a motion of urgent public importance by Representative Dachung Bagos from Plateau State on terrorist attacks on Mangu communities of Mangu Bokos Federal Constituency of Plateau State on Tuesday at Plenary. The report. The recent terrorist attacks on the people of Mangu local government and neighboring communities have left more than 300 persons dead and others seriously injured, property destroyed, and over 18,000 people displaced at different IDP camps within the local government area. According to the lawmaker, most of the victims have sustained various degrees of injuries are currently receiving medical attention at different hospitals within the state. He expressed worry that the continuous attack by terrorist groups in the communities if not addressed immediately, will negatively affect famine, which will worsen the existing food crisis in the communities. Concern that most of my people live in fear of the unknown due to insecurity and can no longer assess their farmlands and their mining sites. 
further concern that unless the issue of insecurity is handled with doggedness at all levels in the country, citizens will experience food shortage as Plateau is one of the main producers of food crops in the country. Lawmakers want security operatives to provide area surveillance and support to flush out the terrorists and destroy their camps to avoid reoccurrence and allow farmers to return to their farms and ancestral homes. Handle the killings going on in Plateau State as a national emergency because of the gravity of which these killings are being done and the constant reoccurrence. I believe if the national, if the office of the National Security Advisor comes into this, there will be a difference. The House unanimously adopted the motion and urged the Secretary to the Government of the Federation to direct the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management and Social Development through the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, at the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internet Displaced Persons to immediately provide relief materials to victims of the attacks in the communities within Maguluka government area. In another development, the House of Representatives has called for the suspension of the implementation of increase in tuition fees in universities. This was called to a motion sponsored by Liu Sanimadaki, who noted the hike in fees by investors is happening against the worsening poverty level in the country, inflation high rate of employment, and the recent fuel price hike. Also concerned that the increase could, could cause disruptions for a number of students who, can, who could not afford the fees, while many of them could be forced to depart their studies. Others could drop out. Worried that the hike may aggravate the already volatile situation in the country as students are already making threats which could lead to an uprising with grievous consequence for the country as a whole. He urged the National Universities Commission to immediately halt implementation of the increase in fees by federal universities while mandating the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services when considered to investigate the increase in fees by federal universities across the country with a view to finding lasting solutions to the challenges in the tertiary education sector. Operatives of the Eboni Police Command has killed two hoodlums who were allegedly enforcing sit-at-home in the state. The hoodlums were said to have shot sporadically into the air within the Oposi area in the Ohuazara local government area of Eboni State while trying to enforce a sit-at-home order on Monday when operatives of the command engaged them in a gun duel. Uh, in a statement on Tuesday, the police public relations officer in the state, Onome Onowapoeya, said that men of the command gunned down one of the hoodlums as the shootout ensued. Meanwhile, a priest in Eboni State who was abducted on Monday in Isu, Onicha local government area, has regained his freedom, police have said. Joseph Azubike a priest of St. Charles Parish, uh, Mbaleze Isu, in Onicha local government area, who was abducted alongside three others, was released on hut. Onome Onowapoeya, the spokesperson of the Eboni Police Command, said that the priest was released at about 6 p.m. on Tuesday. The gunman abducted Azubike near his parish on his way back from pastoral duties according to a statement from the Abakaliki Diocese. Vice President Kashim Shetima on Tuesday met with two state governors from the northern part of the country to discuss pressing issues and work out solutions to the challenges of flooding and insecurity. Gombe State Governor Inouye Haya urged relevant stakeholders to urgently seek solutions to the problem of flooding across the country. On the other hand, Jigar State Governor Umar Namadi said that remedial efforts were already being taken to offset the challenge of flooding in his state. Kendi Amodu reports. Flooding has already started rearing its head in many states across the country. The problems related with last year's torrents have not been properly tackled, and it seems the overflows are on again. Governor Yahya says the deluge that comes with rains is now a national challenge. We must work 
as one people. The problem of flooding is virtually a national issue now. You know, global warming and climate change is affecting all the globe. And for that, uh, we are strategizing. We wouldn't like a repeat of what happened last year to do the same this year. But in whatever we do, we have to be both proactive and reactive. The Gombe State Governor, who is chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, explains that flooding in the north is most often than not as a result of the overflow of water from rivers Niger and Benue and their tributaries. But there are other problems. There is siltation, a lot of siltation, and also as a result of poor farming practices and deforestation. The forests and our farms have now turned and gave way for the desert and those exacerbated siltations that take place along the streams and the rivers. But some state governors are not waiting for the federal government to provide remedies. The polluting in Jigar State is, is really a serious issue and as a government we are doing so many things. We have set up a technical committee of experts and they are looking at uh, how they can, in fact they have submitted a report and part of the report we have started implementing. Uh, we have bought two excavators and also had a Jamar about to excavate us as at today, we are able to dredge the river about 36 kilometers and we have removed the type of grass. Discussions between the governors and Vice President Shatima also revolved around insecurity in the north. Origins of rustling banditry and kidnapping for ransom have been attributed to the struggle for land resources and the encroachment of grazing reserves, cattle routes, and even forest reserves. But this is not a new narrative. The question is, how will problems that have to do with security be resolved? As the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, I will ensure that we get to the roots of all those problems and through the support of the various state governments and the federal government itself, we come up with the solutions, things that will trigger positive action and reaction, not the negatives. As a government, we will do our best also by involving all the stakeholders that the traditional rulers, the ulamas, and all that everybody will be on board to ensure that we sustain the security situation in Jigar State. Vice President Kashim Shetima continues to engage stakeholders and is pulling his weight in the support of the president in the interrogation of solutions to some of the nation's pressing challenges. From State House Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. The People's Democratic Party Governors Forum rose from their inaugural meeting in Abuja with a call on the federal government to immediately rise up to the occasion and tackle the killings, kidnappings and attacks across the country. The governors particularly said that they are worried about the killings in Plato and Zamfara states and asked the federal government and security agencies to rise up to the occasion. In a communique after over three hours meeting in Akwaibom Governor's Lodge in Asokoro, read by the Bochi State Governor and Chairman of the Forum, Bala Muhammad, the governors also advised the federal government, the Independent National Electoral Commission, to be neutral in the coming governorship elections in Bayosa, Imo, and Kogi states. <laughs> and resolve to work together in a united forum. The aim of the forum is to provide a platform for peer review issues, policies, programs, and achievements as legacy projects of member government support the BDP states. The meeting advised the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the security agencies, the meeting noted the deteriorating situation, security situation in the country, especially the wanton destruction of lives and properties of Plato and the states. Consequently, I advise the federal government and security agencies to drive the situation and bring the situation under control. In the interim, the forum will cooperate with the federal government issues concerning the welfare of Nigerians and their governments while striving to maintain the independence and autonomy of the forum through offering constructive criticism where necessary. Thank you very much.
Now, to some more stories, the chairman of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC and Federal State Council, Sani Haliru, and his trade union Congress of Nigeria counterparts, Saidu Moody, are appealing to the governments at all levels to honour their promises of providing palliatives to workers in order to cushion the effect of the fuel subsidy removal on workers. They made a call while speaking in an interview with Trust TV in Goso, the state capital. The state chairman of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, Zamfara State Council, Sani Halilu, and his trade union congress of Nigerian counterpart, Saidu Moody, lamented that workers in Nigeria are not finding the hard economic situation easy, given the fact that they are yet to benefit from the old 18,000 Naira minimum wage, as well as the recent 30,000 Naira new wage. They said as a result of these, the Zamfara state workers cannot cope with the rising cost of living, which hit Nigerians hard under the leadership of the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who on assumption of office announced the subsidy removal. The Labour leaders believe that the Dauda-led administration will alleviate the plight of the Zamfara workers and in order to improve their welfare and enhance productivity. changes from the but the good of it is there is proper mobilization on why the fuel subsidy is removed, and there is talk based on the interaction between the governor, the, the, the president, the governors, and all stakeholders, including the national government, that there is going to be a way of subsidizing the purchase to the workers as well as the Nigerian citizens. Life is this, everything, everything was not so easy to come back. And as a first thing, workers suddenly is very really bad. And then, you know, everything, because of high food stores, because of everything has gone, 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 gone up by almost 100 percent. The NLC chairman tasked the country's leadership to be sincere with their promises so that Nigerians can trust them on commitments made to them to salvage them from the current economic situation, which is taking a toll on all. My appeal to the government of all levels, primary, secondary, and that they should be honest and then they should fill their promises. Because when they tell workers that we will see the fruit of the day, that uh, they will increase salary, not even minimum wage, but uh, minimum wage. And actually, there are previous leaders that they promise their fair and they see the tell end of their story. The state chairman of the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, Saidu Moody, appealed to them for a state governor to set aside 10 or 20 percent of funds to alleviate the plight of workers. He noted that workers in Zamfara State are experiencing untold hardship as a result of the petrol subsidy removal. Even with the five days working days, even with the five days working days, we are not having the expected outcome. So how much more of this in the So as for me, I would have suggested to God, I would have let them make a provision for our workers. The state labor leaders disclosed that plans are underway to meet with Governor Lowell to brief him on the challenges Zamfara workers are currently facing and the need for his administration to proffer solutions to them in the shortest possible time. You're watching the news updates on Trust TV coming up shortly. We take a look at doctors' hard to decipher handwritings. Details and more after the break. If you are just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. Now, a recap of our top stories. For me, I have my eight years, and uh, I think uh, I have enough. A challenge to serve 
in line with the oath I have taken today. Commander of the Board of Directors of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation. And uh, an end to poverty. Both state residents are appealing to stakeholders in the oil sector to consider the plight of killing in Moravan Doma Avenue, uh, Okaru in Plateau State. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that I have what it takes to turn Nigeria around. I have FCT residents on the need to give Gen Z a proper orientation. When a country organizes a credible election, both the government and the opposition will work. Welcome back. You're watching the news updates on Trust TV. And here's a look at the top stories. Reps ask CBN to stop social media details as requirement for bank customers. President Tinubu orders security operatives to stop orgy of violence in Plateau. In other news, the Acting Controller General of the Nigeria Customs Service, Wale Adeni, says, contrary to speculations, President Bola Tinubu has not ordered the reopening of all Nigerian borders. Giving the clarification after a meeting with President Tinubu at the State House on Tuesday, the Controller General of Customs said only five have been so far reopened, while adding that plans are on the way to reopen all the borders the acting controller of customs says that formal opening will be made public in due course. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, part of my discussions uh, with Mr. President is to actively engage uh, customs administrations uh, across our borders, particularly the strategic ones um, that we must work and collaborate with for us to achieve common objectives of border security and regional integration. Uh, in the next uh, uh, one week or thereabouts, I will be paying an official visit to Republic of Benin to uh, have discussions with the Customs Administration of Benin and see how we can uh, take forward the issue of uh, collaborations between us, the issue of border security, the issue of importation uh, across uh, the border, and more importantly, how we can deploy uh, uh, technological solutions to very uh, complex border problems. Now, a doctor's handwriting or any medical report can convey anything from good, not too good, to severe or even life-threatening information for a patient. Hence, when illegibly written to the extent that prescriptions or dosages may be wrongly interpreted by the patients, pharmacists or fellow physicians, it can lead to significant fatal medical outcomes. In this report, medical professionals say that checks have now been put in place to avoid errors occasioned by the doctor's hard to decipher handwritings. Trust TV's Aisha Salehu reports. According to reports by the Institute of Medicine, about 1.5 million injuries occur each year because pharmacists and healthcare workers misread sloppy handwritings. But physicians have attributed the rush to attend to multiple patients at a busy clinic, leading to overworked hand muscles, jargons of the profession, lack of attention as factors responsible for this. Dr. Agboe Buta, a family physician, says writings considered illegible on the part of some medical professionals are not a deliberate act meant to reduce the risk of transfers or continuous use of prescriptions by patients in order to avoid cost of consultations. He, however, says there are variations in the pattern of handwritings irrespective of the profession. Even if we write eligibly, the person who is interpreting it at the end of the pharmacy can also misinterpret it, either as a result of a similarity of your, of your writing or the, his, his or her interpretation of your writing with certain drugs he or she has in mind. Most prescriptions would have basically four components, the name of the drug, the dose of the drug, 
the frequency at which the drug is taken on either on a daily basis or as specified and the duration of use of this medication. So each of these subcomponents can be affected by ineligible right. On the part of pharmacists who are often believed to have the capacity to decode these illegible prescriptions, some precautionary measures are said to be put in place to avoid medical errors and significant life-threatening medical outcomes. There is a term they normally use in, in conveying the message to us. It, it could be a OD or BD or TDS. So what I'm having in my front here is written like TOS. But me as a pharmacist, I know what the doctor wants is TDS. So in, in the event that we are not able to get what exactly does the doctor want, we get back to the doctor and, and ask him to kind of write, write it very clear. At the end, end of the day, we try, we try to kind of, you know, avoid any error that that prescription can cause. Although many are worried about the implications of doctors' illegible prescriptions, even with the advent of electronic medical records and prescription system, experts say there are checks and balances in the structure of the healthcare system, which, if properly implemented, will avert any health implication. Adverse drug reactions from errors in dispensing, which arise from errors in prescriptions and with implication for the health of the patient. So when you have seen your patient and you get to the point of the prescription, you must remember that you have to be alert. Illegible handwritings may lead to confusion, which can cause delays in treatment and mistakes causing fatal medical errors, hence the need for caution on the part of practitioners. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. <laughs> On the foreign scene, Angola and the Democratic Republic of Congo have announced a joint project to rehabilitate the railway line linking the Congolese mining regions to the Atlantic Ocean. Luanda and Kinshasa granted a group of investors a 30-year concession to operate the line linking the Angolan port of Lobito to Kolwezi in the heart of the DRC's mineral producing region. The 1,700 kilometer railway line was built 100 years ago by British investors. The $555 million project, partly financed by the US, is expected to develop exports of copper ore and other products, boost regional trade and strengthen Angola's ties with Western countries. The DRC is the world's leading producer of cobalt and Africa's leading producer of copper two minerals used in the manufacture of solar panels and electric cars. And that's a wrap on the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching.